There's Yella. Quantum travel initiated. Yeah, you had to find them by visual, and it was really, really hard. And you can see, you look at these numbers, how vast the distances are. Complete. All right, so here we are at Yella. Yella has a ring around it, which is very interesting. As far as I know, there's not too many moons that have rings around it. Contact. They followed Begin me. Scan. Stargazer followed me. That's ironic. All right, let's fire up Super Cruise, get a little closer. A lot of people follow me. Begin scan. All right, so you can see my super cruise speed here. I'm going pr not really that fast. This is a really small moon. Look how quickly I can get around it. So this is genuinely a pretty small moon. Let's slow down a little bit here. Get a nice cruise velocity. I think that's pretty good. Let's take a look at the moon. All right, so you can see a lot of craters on the moon. This is not resurfaced. This is not an ice moon. There is no ice visible on this moon at all. Um, this has the look of a very primitive object. It looks a lot like uh, some of the larger asteroids that we know of, like Ceres uh, for Vesta is a large asteroid in the asteroid belt. Looks very, very similar to some of those. Uh, there's a little geological structure there. Probably a rift of some sort. There's another one. This is a very classic kind of moon shape they're going for here. Let me recorrect my orbit. There we go. Uh, the surface of, of a moon structure like this is called a regolith. It's made up, it's basically very dusty. Remember uh, seeing moon people or the astronauts jumping up and down on the moon and seeing all those dust kicked up? That's a regolith. Uh, it's very, very dusty, and that's because all of these impacts throw up debris and they just kind of settle down onto the surface. But the gravity isn't that high, so they don't really compact. There's no water, there's no soil, so they just kind of dust uh, settles on the surface, for lack of a better way to put it. Slow down a little. I have to work on my orbiting skill here. <laughs> so now we're on the dark side. Uh, you can see some lighter patches here. Um, probably still not ice. Uh, if I had to hazard a guess, uh, just for what they decided that design cue came from. What the hell was that? Oh well, not important. Whatever that was. Uh, could be a mineral called a... Uh, a north of site. That's actually pretty common on our moon. Probably wouldn't be super common on a lot of other moons, though. So yeah, this is this is a classic small orbiting object. This is very very classic. Looks like asteroids. Looks like a lot of small moons. Heavily impacted. The surface is as old as the planet itself or the star itself. Most old moons like this, like the asteroids in, in orbit, are as old as whatever they're orbiting. And the planet itself is probably as old as the star itself. So this is as old as the solar system. That's why there's so many craters on the surface. It's had a lot of time to, commun uh, to accumulate those kind of craters. A very classic sort of body. No, it's not running any better. Although I've been pretty stable, even though I've been in for a, a, a decent while here. The craters on here aren't entirely accurate. Uh, if I want to break down some scientific inaccuracies, I would start with probably the craters. Um, although this is a really small object, so maybe they're not too bad. Uh, craters generally, when they get to about 10 kilometers in diameter or bigger, start to develop uh, internal structures. They develop central peaks. If you look at some of the big craters in the moon, you'll see there's central peaks on the inside. Um, and most of these seem to be just classic bowl-shaped craters uh, and don't seem to have central peaks. I'm going to 
gonna slow down a little, take a closer look. Contact. Begin scan. Contact. Yeah, definitely no central peaks. Um, you can, this is definitely styling cues uh, from asteroids and things like that. Contact. I really need to fix my trajectory here. Starting to drift pretty wide. But it's still pretty cool. It's classic. You would expect this in a game. A moon, or a moon of similar structure. I think I'm going to crash soon. My ship is handling in very funny ways. Let's talk about this ring. So this ring is not accurate. Um, this is sort of a classic video game thing to put in a very tightly condensed asteroid system like this. Uh, this is not gravitationally stable and very unlikely to happen. If you had a ring, it would likely be dust particles and it wouldn't be very big. Uh, for you to have this many big objects close together would be really, 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 really unstable. Let's go to space combat maneuvering mode. So, and they're not, they're not really spinning or tossing. They would be kind of doing their own little motions. The reason they did this is one, you can't do the spin and tossing, that's extremely animation heavy. And there goes my crash. Uh, the other reason they did that is because it's fun. I mean, who doesn't want to fly in and out and duck between asteroids like Luke Skywalker? Everybody wants to do that. But nobody know, nobody realizes that there's no r real asteroid belts like that. Nothing really exists like that. Not permanently. If you recently broke up a moon or broke up a planetary body, the first few years after it broke up, it might look like that. But you wouldn't want to fly there. Holy crap, we wouldn't want to fly there. 